These are Clarence's best episodes of all time. The third one being The Phantom Clarence has a rating of 8.6 stars. The episode starts with this very odd person with a book. The book looks old like it's going to tell us a very old story. He also has a hook on his hand for whatever reason. Once he opens up the book it cuts to Clarence moving a bunch of stuff around his house like he's getting ready for some party. Clarence's mom and Chad arrive home and see the house a total mess and with some special decorations. Clarence announces that he's having the biggest baddest sleepover party ever claiming it will be the best sleepover in the whole world. His mom goes on about all the parties he's already had this week like the petting zoo and the bubble bath party. We then see Clarence try to invite his friends Jeff and Sumo to a sleepover. Jeff says no because it will be overwhelming for him. Also this is important and I'll explain why in a second. And Sumo's dad says no because they're preparing for the apocalypse. He even tries to invite his teacher Miss Baker who declines because well it'd be kind of weird. But also it seems like she has her own problems because we see her moving out of her apartment. Clarence then remembers that he can invite Belson who's in detention. This dude somehow got like a thousand bags of fertilizer to put in the room for a prank on the teacher. And of course the teacher says he can't come. Clarence gets pretty sad because all his friends are busy but his mom tries to cheer him up making him hot chocolate and saying that she and Chad will come to sleep over. Then his mom says that he should probably invite Jeff again because he'd probably want to come now since no one else is coming and it won't be overwhelming for him. After bargaining with Jeff saying he'll buy his favorite snacks and he can bring his kite, Clarence finally gets Jeff to agree to come. And then Clarence just jumps out the window, probably to get snacks or something, but no one really knows. We then see a news report saying there's going to be severe weather, but it gets cut off by bingo. Chad and Clarence's mom fall asleep in Clarence's fort, but then get jump scared when Jeff comes over looking for Clarence, but he's still not back. Chad and Jeff have an awkward stare off. Then they bond over a mattress commercial. Then Jeff goes outside to fly his new kite, Jelly Man, but it crashes into the power line causing a huge power outage in the whole town. Then it ends with a cliffhanger, because this is actually a multi-part series called Clarence's Storming Sleepover. And honestly, the episode isn't groundbreaking, but I think it was the foundation for this great multi-part series, because even I want to know what happened to Clarence. Start to finish, it had a clear plot and a problem. The main plot is that Clarence wants to have the best sleepover on the planet. The problem is that no one in town can come to a sleepover. Then at the end, there's a great cliffhanger that makes us want to watch more and see what happens. The second highest rated Clarence episode is Little Buddy, also ranked at 8.6. The episode opens up with a commercial advertising the toy Little Buddy, saying it's your best friend in the whole wide world. In the commercial, the other guy holding the doll's hand looks really creeped out, which is some foreshadowing, by the way. We see that it was Clarence showing this video to his class, and his class looks scarred for life. Then he pulls out his little buddy, and we see that it's seen some stuff. Even the teacher is weirded out by his nasty doll. After we see Clarence try to show off his dolls to his friends but they don't even want to touch it. The thing is nasty. You know it's bad when even Sumo doesn't want to touch his doll. This is literally where he lives by the way. Clarence then scares someone with his doll so badly he makes them fall over and cry and he and little buddy get put in timeout. Clarence then goes like insane and sees the world end and restart before his timeout is over and he gets sad because he missed out on recess which I can actually relate to. You see one time little eight year old me wanted to go to the bathroom during recess and I could not open the door. It was so strong so I sat in there crying and I was freaking out and I opened the door and recess was done. So I, I understand. But anyways, Clarence looks traumatized in class and it cuts to him freaking out behind a window, straight up losing his mind. He blames little buddy for making him miss recess and he takes it out on him very violently. He even buries little buddy alive. Then we go through a time lapse of Clarence going to school every day, except he's not the same. He has a mad expression on his face and even goes bald and goes emo, wearing a black hoodie and doing bad stuff and keeps getting detention. The song that plays even hints at his feelings and says things like, I miss my little buddy. After the song's over, Belson asks him what happened to him to make him cool and Clarence just ignores him. Clarence is driven to pure madness and comes to school dressed like little buddy begging Jeff to hold little buddy's attached arm. Psychopath. After Belson pulls Clarence's pants down he straight up punches him right in his fat squidward nose which is kind of satisfying to see. Then when Clarence thinks he's about to get expelled for all his bad behavior Miss Baker says she has someone who was there to see him. It's little buddy! Clarence's whole expression changes and we get a touching reunion for Clarence and little buddy and Miss Baker lets Clarence have his own personal recess with little buddy. The episode ends with Clarence little buddy remaking the commercial that was shown in the beginning Beginning, and Clarence seemed like he's finally back to normal. I think part of what makes this episode so good is that we see a dark depressed side of Clarence that was never shown before and he was even more evil than Belson who's usually the villain of the show. They did a really great job showing Clarence's descent into madness after he gives a little buddy. The scene at the end really tied it all together and showed that Clarence didn't need a punishment to get better. He just needed his toy back. But the one thing we'll never know is how did little buddy go from buried somewhere deep in the woods to Miss Baker? Maybe he walked there himself. And finally the highest rated episode of Clarence with an amazing 9.3 stars is captured the flag. The episode starts off with William grabbing the flag from the base and running off. He looks absolutely terrified. Also, look at this guy's outfit. He looks like a fast food order. But anyways, he starts to get cocky because no one's around him and lowers his guard and then smacks a tripwire and we hear scary voices. But look, the neutral zone. He's almost there. Then water balloons rain from the sky. Boom, boom, boom. A group of kids come out and Julian is surrounded and hopeless. They're about
about to finish him off with balloons until our almighty hero Clarence saves the day. Think I missed this party? Well, anyways, Julian leaves the flag on the floor, and while struggling to get it back, Chelsea shows up in a tree shouting, Don't mess with the chicken nuggets. Oh, so that's why he's wearing a fast food bag. They ultimately never got the flag back. Psych! Julian hid the flag in his fast food bag shirt thing. After this, we realize there are multiple teams, and the flag they just captured was from the weakest team, the fairies. So then we meet the strongest team, the baby dinosaurs, led by Belson, of course, who tells them he has won every year, and he snatches the juices from them just to pour it out and give his friend a juice shower. The chicken nuggets go back to their base to regroup, and we see a map which is pretty much just a monopoly board, and they plan a strategy to take out Belson's dinosaurs once and for all. So far, I can already tell this episode's gonna be great. It's like an all-out war with the whole neighborhood, which already makes me want to know who was gonna win. Not only that, but the way they make a beloved childhood game like Capture the Flag seem so intense and serious really speaks to my inner child, since we all would take this game so seriously. Anyways though, we see the chicken nuggets scouting the wheelie's flag planning an attack. Clarence starts sneaking around until he sees the fairies sad because they're in jail, and then somehow Clarence's fingers has its own smaller fingers? What the heck? Weird. A anyways, Clarence frees the fairies and offers to get them juice. Then Chelsea and Julian are about to take the flag when BAM! Some weird new group chanting juice, juice, juice pop up and absolutely demolish the wheelies and Nathan says, I don't work for Belson anymore. Which makes you wonder, who is the new group and who is their leader? Chelsea fights them off with some anime moves and they barely escape. Then we see Belson get jumped by the juice group and get nailed to water balloons. So even Belson doesn't know who this new group is. Chelsea and Julian come back to Clarence and the fairies who are really enjoying their apple juice and see Clarence as some god now. Clarence is on a newfound path of peace and sets out to free all of those who were wrongfully imprisoned. Chelsea and Julian still plan to steal Belson's flag, so they set out on their mission. Once they get to Belson's, they see him looking absolutely mortified and losing it and they keep talking about the mysterious leader of this new gang. Who the heck is this guy? Then BAM! The juice gang shows up and takes out everybody. Clarence then comes to free the wheelies and they all start to worship him. Clarence then remembers that he has Jeff in prison at his base and he sets out on a journey to go free him. Then, we go to the juice gang's hideout and we see they capture Julian, Chelsea, and Belson. Some kid comes out and starts announcing the big reveal for the boogeyman in my basement, which turns out the new mysterious leader has been Sumo this whole time. His clothes look sick though, I can't even lie. Sumo exclaims that Belson has ruled and stolen juice from thirsty kids for too long, and enough is enough. The reign is over. Sumo states, as long as you listen to me, you can have all the juice you want. Then Sumo straight up catches the balloon Chelsea throws at him, and he runs at her with a chainsaw. But right before he gets her, Belson yells, Threat the treehouse! The flags are at the treehouse! But how did he know that? Well, I'll explain in a second. Sumo gives an order on his walkie-talkie to attack the treehouse, but Clarence is on his way up there too. All hope seems lost when Sumo's team gets all the flags, but Clarence shows up with his new army of free prisoners, and Clarence destroys Sumo's warriors and even reflects a balloon right off his belly. Clarence has beaten Sumo's army, and now they all are planning to storm Sumo's base and free all the prisoners. Clarence comes in looking like a savior, and he says his famous line yet again, Think I missed this party? Sumo tries to convince Clarence to join him, but Clarence is totally focused on his goal of freeing everyone, and he tears down Sumo's empire. Clarence announces that the war is over, and then Chad shows up and they all team up and bully Chad. Poor Chad. Then Belson reveals that he switched out all the flags for decoys, and he had them the whole time, so he actually won. And everyone gangs up on Belson, and he shouts, I'm still king! And the episode ends. Start to finish, this episode was amazing, and the atmosphere that makes it really feel like an all-out war, just like when we were kids playing Capture the Flag. I think one of the best parts of the episode was that no one knew who the leader of the Juice Gang was, and then BAM! Big reveal, it's been Sumo the whole time. Also, the fact they make Clarence some angelic savior who frees everyone and is the hero of the story really ties it all together. And I can definitely see why this episode is rated so highly. But I don't know, I don't know, I'm just watching TV. I'm watching Overthink some more and watch TV some more while well, you click these videos. I'm thinking all the time, overthinking right now, and I'm watching.